testing, 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 one, two, three, testing, 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 one, two, three. Testing, 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 one, two, three, testing. Hello? Oh, me. okay. Hi, Pastor Sandra. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Hello? Can you see me? Hello? Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? Hey, beloved, welcome back to Called for More podcast. And I'm so excited because today I have one of our speakers for the Called Conference, and that is San Pastor Sandra Webster. And before I have her share a few words and we get into this conversation, I just want to remind you all that your calling is more than the work you do. Your calling is an invitation to have a relationship with God, to become who he called you to be, to do what he called you to do, and of course, live the life and enjoy the life that he planned for you. And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Sandra's calling and um, all of that. And I'm just so excited to bring all of the speakers, even the people that will be leading worship to you guys for this series. Sandra has served as a co-founder, as co-founder and pastor of Total Restoration Ministries for over 20 years. She earned her associate's and ministerial degree from Harvard, Harvard, excuse me, Harvest Bible University. She received her doctorate degree from Next Dimension University. She has worked with women's shelters for over 20 years, having the opportunity to uplift and encourage broken women who desperately need to know they are loved by the one who matters most. God has favored Sandra to be his voice and touch the lives of hundreds of women across conferences, retreats, and workshops. She has had to overcome many painful challenges in her life from childhood, abuse, drug addiction, and prison. This is why she is so passionate about helping women arise from beauty to ashes. And I'm going to let her share more about her and her story of empowering, equipping, and encouraging women through her life-saving and relevant messages. But this is who you guys are getting. She will be speaking on the topic of, on the subject of grace for every season of your race. And I'm just excited for her to dig into that at the conference. So today we're gonna to talk about some other things. So welcome, Pastor Sandra. I'm honored to be here, uh, uh, Krista. I'm, I'm, I'm just so excited and I'm excited about the upcoming called conference. I know that God is gonna move um, tremendously there and uh, I'm just excited, I'm humbled that you would ask me and I look forward to being a part of this mighty uh, vision uh, that God has given you to uh, to, to reach out to women and to offer this conference. So I'm excited. Praise God. Um, and this year's theme is called to triumph. And so, um, and I, you know, go before the father every year and ask him, this is our fourth year. And I ask him, Lord, what do you want this um, conference to be about? And um he gives me a word and then I build around that. And mm -hmm. I, the word triumph is uh, means victorious, to be victorious, to overcome. And so he makes us overcomers. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. So it's not just that we are always going through 
a battle, but that's our position from the beginning oh. that we have already triumphed, that we have already won, that God is within us. And so we will not fall. And even when we fall down, his spirit lifts us up because of that yeah. resurrection power. So I don't want to preach, but what I want to do before we talk about these questions that I have for you and you share a bit of your testimony with us, I want to just let people know, I always like to let people know where and how I met a person. So I met Pastor Sandra. I think your your husband, um, we were friends first maybe on Facebook and then you guys, and then you friended me or some type of way we all became friends. And then last year, which would have been almost two years now, over a year and a half because the call conference was always in January. And then it pivoted in 2021 when we had it in 2020 and then COVID. And so 2021, I did not have it, but I believe that the Lord was having me change it anyway around the biblical calendar. So the Hebraic um, new year happens in September. So that is specifically why I decided if I'm going to change it to change it to that time. And so, but with that, um, when you came last year, I met you and you brought a group of women mm -hmm. um, with you from LA. And I thought, you know, I've had, so that was my third year and I've had women come from different places. And I thought, wow, this is a pastor. And she brought her team, what a blessing. So then I put a face because we meet people on, on you know, social media. And I've met yeah. people before that have come down for conferences as, as I'm sure you have. And it's like, okay. And so I began to watch you more on, um, on social media and you're you're just such a not just a powerful woman of God but just a light yeah. in what God is doing and a light and so for me last year was just really a season of pausing um coming through the end of a season of a huge transition in my life downsizing becoming an empty nester and just re got real orchestrating my life so in that trying to stay in step with God, but really, you know, doing minimal. <laughs> yeah. He rebuilds. And yeah. so I'm so happy to be back with the refreshed vision and all of that for God. And so that is how, that is how we met. And so I just am so um, honored to have you be with us knowing that, you know, um, I've watched you preach some online as you brought the word. And then I've watched you, um, you know, your page is always so positive and the work that you're doing there with the women in the LA area is just amazing um, as far as, and, you know, men and women. So I just, um, the home. So can you share a little bit about Total Restoration Ministries and how that happened um, and how that started? Wow. That's been so many, many moons ago. <laughs> <laughs> and where no. you're at now. <laughs> But uh, um, so, you know, um, my husband and I, um, um, we, uh, we were on drugs ourselves. We were in homeless shelters and, and um, we uh, came into a Christ-centered discipleship program. And um, I didn't know my husband at the time. Um, we met in ministry um, after a couple of years um, and uh, we, got, um, um, we got married and then um, our pastor launched us to California. Actually, our ministry, Total Restoration, was birthed in, in uh, South Central. We were in South Central for like eight years. And um, just, um, just we just, God called us to this. You know, um, you, you talk of your ministries about cult. And people all the time, Krista, ask me, how do you do what you do? I would like to do what you, you do, you're doing. Um, I would like to get be a part of something like that. And this is, this is funny because I say, I say all the time to this, no, you just can't wake up and decide I'm going to open up uh, a shelter for women or men or take people off the streets from drugs and alcohol. You know, um, you have to be called, you have to be called to this area of ministry and because it entails so much um, of your time, um, of, of your heart is always in it because you're passionate about God, you're passionate about God's people. And so, you know, dealing with the homeless population and the, the drug addicts and um, they come broken, they come hurting. 
and they're looking for somebody to lash out. So we're not just um, um, a shelter, a discipleship home for men and women, but we also are a church. So we, you know, we have church services and, you know, one of the things that my husband and I have done since we birthed, since God uh, gave us the vision for Total Restoration Ministries, um, we're all about community. You know, we know that church is not just the four walls. And uh, we've always been about reaching outside the four walls and do outreaches. We got an um, upcoming uh, back to school outreach coming up and we're gonna be giving away, LA County has partnered with us. Um, LA County um, Health Department has uh, a partner with us. We're gonna be doing vaccines, um, haircuts, free school supplies, free backpacks. And so when we do this for like four holidays, we focus on four holidays, Thanksgiving, we feed the homeless, Christmas, we, we give Christmas toys um, to families of low income families within the community. And then we do a Easter, a big, huge Easter outreach uh, to the community. And um, so basically it's, it's been in existence since 2002. And um, it was all God. I, I mean, it was just God. He gave us the vision. He gave us, um, he restored us. He redeemed us. He called us. He set us apart. And then he placed his vision in us. And it's crazy because when we started in South Central, we had nothing, Crystal. We were borrowing rides um, from, it's crazy. We were borrowing rides from, um, we were, our church was in South Central on Vermont in 89. And if you know the area, we were right in the middle of a bunch of bookie joints. And so um, they had, they had, um, <laughs> they had said that, um, they had already told us, we know that you guys won't be here, but six months. We've ran out churches over the years and over the years. You guys are not going to be here for no more, no more than six months. They never do stay here. And so, um, so they got to know us over time and um, fell in love with us. And they just saw that we were just very authentic. Um, we were pastors, but we're, we're just ourselves. We're just about being real and about being authentic and transparent and uh, when we left in 2008 they cried uh they they cried uh we were there for eight years ministering right there in the streets of south central reaching out to the um going down to la um downtown to skid row and feeding homeless but yeah it was birthed in 2002 and so um it's just been an amazing ride um filled with a lot of heartache a lot of pain a lot of joy a lot of celebration, and it's just been a, a beautiful blessing. And my husband just passed. I'm sorry. And uh, my our husband, my husband, who was the senior pastor, died on um, uh, August 27th of COVID. And so, um, God, he, I know that this was what God gave us to do. And I know he's in heaven, and he's cheering me on, and he's saying, "Keep going forward with Total Restoration Ministries and what God called us to do." So. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And you know, I just, you are a picture of total restoration. I love stories like this because look what God can do. We don't yeah. like what we've been through. And you are of so course. right that um, you have to be called to ministry, to specific areas of ministries. You have to know your lane and your gifting and your ministry, as they say. And so- yes. You really do have to know. And so I think it's so important and which is why, you know, I believe that the, our calling is more than the work that we do because God, first of all, calls us into a relationship with him. And if we don't yeah. have that relationship with him and we don't have a hearing ear and, and not just a prayer life where we are, um, it's monologue, but we're, we're having dialogue and we're hearing back from God and we're, we're seeing things as he sees us and he's given us revelation and guiding us into his will. Then yes. we could do a lot of things, but they might not be what God would call us to do, but God is real and he speaks and he leads and he guides and he directs. And so many people, um, think that they don't, they, they can't have that or that they're just going to kind of, for lack of a better word, roll the dice. But God is very specific. He has a plan for each one of us and he's made us to be someone. That's right. The gifts and the talents and the abilities that he puts in us is directly related to the things that he's called us to do and the things that we will face. And just like Paul, he said, called to be an apostle. 
Right. So when he calls you to do deliverance work, when he calls right. you to reach out, that's because everything that you went through, he already planned that it would work for your good so that when you came into the gift and calling of God in Christ, then those things that the enemy went for evil, then you're just the weapon that he needs to pull people out. And maybe everybody didn't make it, but because you and your husband made it out in Christ, now you can bring other people out. And so it's so important to understand that the call of God. And yeah. that is, you know, the reason, um, and then I want to ask you some more questions, but it's just so good. You just made me think the reason why I did the call conference in the beginning is because the Lord said to me, when I wrote a book back in 2016, I want you to call my daughters into my love, my acceptance mm. and my beauty so that they can become who I called them to be and reach their destiny. And mm. I, and so in the book, with, which is about Ruth, based on the book of Ruth, it talks about he called her out to bring her in and she walked into her destiny. But first it was because she chose God. She yeah. chose God's people. She wasn't going for Boaz. We always focus on that. But Boaz yeah. was part of the story that God had written for her because it went beyond that to other generations, David and all of that. And so it's so important that we start there. And so many times people put the works before they actually get the call of God yeah. and find out what they're supposed to do. And so it's, it's just, um, and I think you may have answered this question. Um, I, I was going to ask you, do you remember when God first called you? And maybe you haven't, how did he call you guys in to the that ministry specifically? So you talked about how it started, but how did you actually get that call? Maybe for somebody that needs to know what that looks like. How did you <laughs> wow. know? You know, um, 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 wow. Um, so, so, so when, when, um, when God called me, um, well, when he, you know, how you keep talking about first God calling is not just about platform or about ministry, but it's in a call into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And then sitting, um, you've mentioned sitting with Jesus and allowing him to download revelation and purpose and destiny into our hearts to fulfill our calling. You mentioned those things. Well, um, mine was unorthodox and in his calling to me because I was I was called by God, um, saved in a county jail. Um, um, I was set up by God. Um, I was set up by God to go to a Bible study. I had no intentions, Krista, on getting a relationship with God. I was bored. Um, they said, if you don't go to Bible study for the hour, you have to sit on your bunk bed. Well, I'm not, I don't like sitting anywhere. I already feel like I'm locked up already. So I wanted to get out of the dorm. And so I went, you know, not, not expecting anything, but just to get out of the dorm. But how many know that Holy Spirit knows how to set you up? And so it was a Holy Ghost setup, Krista. I attend, I started attending these Bible studies in this county jail um, week after week. I don't exactly remember the exact week or month that it happened, but one particular Bible study, I just, I'm, I, I felt the presence of God just overcome me in that Bible study with the jumpsuit on, with the orange jumpsuit, county jail jumpsuit on, sitting in that Bible study and tears started flowing down my eyes. And I knew that God had touched me because even though I had that county jail cell suit on, Krista, for the first time in my life, I felt free. Like I literally felt like chains were broken. I didn't even care about leaving. I didn't care about, I didn't care about none of that. And so to the question that you say is that after that um, experience, um, I started a Bible study in the county jail. Cause I, I, I don't know, I just, I, I just, I felt called that it was my mission to reach the other inmates that were with me to, to bring them out of hopelessness out of, I wanted them to experience what I had just encountered 
at that Bible study, I felt like the Samaritan woman. That's exactly who I was. I got instantly saved and immediately turned into an evangelist. And I went straight into just, I'm having a Bible study, going to each girl in the, in the dorm. I'm having a Bible study. This is funny. This is so funny. You're going to crack up. We go open our Bible study. We're opening up our Bible study. We're opening up the Bible. And I said, let's just open it. They're all looking at me. <laughs> we read a verse and they all look at me and they're like, what does that mean? And I was like, I don't know, but let's just keep reading. I didn't know how to give a Bible study. <laughs> but anyways, um, the bottom line is, is that I tried to run. Um, um, God spoke to me. Um, I was a runner for 11 years. I kept going in and out of Christian recovery homes for 11 years, a backslider. I was a bitch of backslider. And, and one time, um, one of the times I was in um, a Victory Outreach Women's Home and um, we were in prayer. It was afternoon prayer. It was about four of us. It was only four or five of us girls. And I'm telling you the power and the presence of God fell, the glory of God. There was a thick cloud that was in that living room. Everybody was weeping. Everybody was crying and I was sitting up and I, we, everybody was, there was all on the floor, Krista. Everybody was on their full, on the face, on their face, weeping. And I looked up and there was a thick cloud in the middle of the room. So all of a sudden I heard God. He said, I heard the audible voice of God. I'm still very new to the things of God. I'm only 23. I really don't know about God. I was released out of jail. I fell in the cracks. I didn't have a support system. So I fell right through the cracks. I come from a very dysfunctional, drug abusive, um, you know, family a history of drugs, history of 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 um, drug dealers, ex felons. So I just fell immediately through the cracks. I ended up in this Christian recovery home, Victory Outreach. Long story short, I'm trying to get to the point. Isaiah 61. I'm in that room, and God said, "Do you know where you're at?" And I said, "No." And he, he closed my eyes. Well, when I closed my eyes. I was up in the clouds. I was having a vision. God was giving me a vision and he grabbed my hand. He said, let me show you something. And he took me and he pointed. He said, look over there. But when I looked, it was people behind jail cell bars. They were behind bars, prison bar cells. And they, all I could see was their mouth and their hands. Their hands were like extended outside of the bars like this. Just like you see my hand like this. That's all I could see was their hand and their mouth. And they were saying, help, help. And all of a sudden I heard God say, Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord is upon you. I've anointed you to preach uh, 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 to the captives. I've anointed you to preach um, to, to the captives, to set the captives free. Mm. And so there God called me. And from that day on, I kept going in and out of Christian recovery programs. I did not want the calling. I didn't want. I did not want to give up the lifestyle. I was, I was struggling because of the family that I came from. I had a lot of, um, how do you want it? Layers of generational curses and strongholds that I needed to be broken. And it was just difficult for me to wrap my mind around that God called me, that even though God gave me the vision, God kept telling me even all the years that I was running from the calling, I, I just was like, you know, I mean, I don't care what Christian recovery home I would go in the pastor's wife. I'm telling you, Krista would always just have take, like, show me favor with them. Like, take me in their homes. Like, I mean, just out of all the women and the women's take me in their homes. And like, there's something about you. There, there's something. And I'm like, what, 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 what is it? I don't see it, you know, but finally, after years and years, in 1999, I threw my hands up in the air and I just say, I surrender. I'm going to stop fighting with God. I surrender. I, I know I can't fight with you. I know you called me. I know you have a calling on my life and I'm not going to win this fight. And I, I'm just going to surrender wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. And from that day forward, I haven't looked back. And then that's when I met my husband in that ministry a year, two years later. And I was going to ask you that. So then steps in Pastor Webster. So how did that come to be? That is <laughs> this week's story. So I well, have I haven't heard it, guys. So we'll be <laughs> it together. But it just is. yes, yes. So you know, of course, he couldn't help. He saw this fine, fine. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm kidding. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyways, no, um, honestly, one of the things that I loved about my husband is that he was a Chicago police officer. I went to Chicago. I left my hometown of Toledo, Ohio and entered this Christian recovery program. And, um, and um, so about a year later, we were assigned to Echo Park to run a center. And I hated him. I mean, he was ego. He was, he, he, to me, he was he, he, uh, conceited. All the other women in the church were like, oh, oh, like he's Bruno Mars or something. You know what I'm saying? Like he's Denzel. And I'm like, please, you know. Um, um, anyways, um, but we just started doing ministry together in Echo Park. Um, and we just, um, I was assigned to, to we, we were assigned to Echo Park to run a center. And I was uh, called to run the women's shelter. He was called to run the, uh, the men's uh, discipleship home and also pastor, um, be the assistant pastor of the church over there. And so um, we, what, we got into it. We were having a revival and we got into it, Crystal. And, um, and we got into a big, it was the day of the revival and the enemy was attacking us. And we got into a huge argument and, um, we got into a huge argument. I was all in his face. You know, I'm still being delivered. I got a little Tupac and a little two Jesus still going on. Got a little hood. I'm still a little hood and a little still the holy at the same time. And uh, so she comes I'm all in his time to time. Bless the Lord. Go, <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so I'm all in his face and I'm like, you know, going off on him. He says, he says that in that moment that God told him, that's going to be your wife. And he said, he looked at me. He didn't say anything. He said, he, he just laughed to himself. He said, well, God, you got jokes. He said, cause this one is crazy. Uh, um, so anyways, um, soon after he proposed to me and then, uh, we got married in Chicago in, um, 2001 and in November of 2020, even though we took a step of faith, we, um, I said, babe, I want to dance. I, I said, you know, we've been serving God and blowing our soul out for God. I said, I don't want to get emotional. I said, I want to dance. I want to have just a little intimate gathering with just our closest friends because it was COVID. So we found this little intimate, like a place in Pomona and it was catered and we got a DJ and we danced all night. And it, I mean, we celebrated our 20th year anniversary uh november 11th of 2020 so i feel like god was giving me my my last dance with my husband yeah so it was beautiful i remember seeing all those beautiful pictures and so yeah yeah what a blessing what a blessing yes. for god to give you that kind of love for 20 years a man of god somebody that you met in ministry and built ministry with that's a that's a a word all in itself and that's a testimony yeah. for somebody that's holding on those precious years and all that you have and to be able to continue the work and i know that you miss him but wow what a what a you know what a what a person to miss what a way yeah. you know yeah. what i mean what a yeah. Person, yeah. even though he's going to be able to have had that because yeah. sometimes people get in ministry and they don't meet someone right away or they don't connect and you know and for sure. God to give you that blessing what a what a what an awesome thing and for it to be a man of god you Amen. know sometimes people we meet people and it's like mm, no, I'm not trying to be super religious, but mm -hmm. you know, it is possible for me to wait and find a man of God versus settle. And so I love hearing stories like this because it is possible. And somebody needs yes. to hear that because sometimes we, and not that we have to be, it's not the material things, but we take the bar down way low spiritually, you know? Yes. Um, yes. And, you know, if, if he just go to church, you know, and yeah. that's the thing that God has someone that matches your purpose. Yes. That it can help you and, and be a covering to you and that you can be a helpmate too. That's for the single women and for the women who, you know, a lot of us, 
Uh, let me put my questions down real quick again. This is not, you know, your first rodeo. You know, this is not your first marriage or your first, there's, it's, I think it's a different ministry and this is kind of veering off a little bit for women who have already been married or already have children or who are not, who weren't raised in the church and, and that sometimes people give up hope on love after they get saved in ministry, but God is in the business of bringing people together when he knows it's going to bless and further his kingdom and so that's right possible. and so we don't have to give up ladies but we can wait on god and so um wow that's just so much i could really just go into that and just get into um so many questions about that what an amazing amazing uh testimony wow that when you talk about hearing god and him showing you visions and that is how he speaks to us. I think yeah. that the things that I have done for the Lord, and there's no comparison, bigger or smaller, but the things that he calls us to do is what we're going to be accountable for. Sure. Um, and I think that the things that we, that last, I just did a post today, not even knowing that we were going to talk about that, but that everything that we will ever do of eternal value is dependent on our relationship with God and our willingness to follow his guidance because sure. you said you fought with him. And I know that even doing call conference from the beginning, I fought with God because I'm like, you know, even when he called me into ministry, I could tell a story, but I won't, won't get into that. But I remember a similar being called into ministry. And I remember being crying um, and saying, God, what are you doing? Why, yeah. why would you call me into ministry? I'm going through a divorce. I was a teenage mom. I'm, I have, you know, four small kids. We, are you sure this is what you're calling me to do? And, you know, weeping before him, and I remember being called to lead women's ministry at my local church when there was several women who were, you know, married, who had husbands. There's a lot of people that can do this. My pastors are not, you know, they can see, but yet my pastor was going to call somebody else and the Lord out of his own natural self like this is, and he said, the Lord spoke to him hmm. and told him to put me in that position that was probably 2008 I was called into ministry before that but then I started leading women back in 2008 and so it's just been this journey and to be honest you know as I've gone through things I have had seasons where I've struggled like God are you like you don't see all the crazy stuff going on and yeah. and it's not that you know I am sinning because that's a different thing not that we, we're all sinners but I'm not like you know in some type of you know willful sinning situation but the craziness that happens in life and then you learn that that's part of ministry and that everybody yeah. has something going on and God does not qual he doesn't call the qualified he qualifies the call and he exactly. calls us regardless and it's it's a fallacy for us, and it's a, it's it's false what the enemy puts out there. The images and things that are presented, we can put anything forth to make it look good on social media. But at the end of the day, we're all walking through something in any given season, and yes. that I mean it's just always a struggle. But there's always things that we're having to overcome and and face and uh, put our foot on to keep moving forward. But that doesn't mean that you're not called and that God hasn't qualified you. And I think I had to get that in my mind when my children began coming of age. And it's like, oh, Jesus, what are the, you know, I sent them to private school, all these things. And they were, you know, I wanted them to be little saints and go to ministry, get, get into ministry just like me. And that did not happen. And, you know, how naive was I to think, you know, that this is all going to just work this way. And when it didn't just go smooth as they went away to college, it kind of shook me for a while, but God, he still, he still calls us and we're still, um, like you said, running. Uh, but at some point we have to surrender and say, God, you called me, so I'm going to do it. And I think those are the type of people that he's looking for. And I think it's okay to know that you're called and know that you're qualified. So I'm not against that type of confidence, but when, but 
God wants someone that will depend on him, that we don't have all the answers so right. that he can show up in a, in a bigger way, you know? Sure. Yes. And so I heard you talking about, um, you are just your authentic self and you and your husband are, have been authentic and what, and what does that look like for you? Because there, that's part of identity for me. I remember when I talking about getting called, the Lord called me and talking about what I just said, you know, like, Lord, are you sure that you called me? I'm like, you know, I'm not like the other women in this church. And, you know, in that way of, you know, they're all, uh, at that time, back in the early 2000s, late 90s, I think I went to my church in 2000, but it was right coming out of the 90s, you know, everyone wore suits and, you know, all of this, and I was more bohemian style, and I'm like, are you sure, you know, like big skirts and all of that, and it's like, are you sure you caught me, and I began to try and be like other women that I saw in ministry, as I, as God was calling me into ministry, well, this is how they dress, and this is how you're supposed to look, and this is kind of the culture, and and God pulled me to the side one day I was on a fast and he said I knew who you were when I called you oh. you're not coming to my presence with pretense coming yes. to my I want an authentic relationship with you and when right. he used that word authentic I knew that it meant that he wanted not only an authentic and genuine relationship with me, but that in that I need, I could be myself, that I didn't have to pretend to be who I was not with God because he saw me anyway. And that gave me so much freedom to not have to, to be who God called me to be. And then to be able to know that he called me. And what I want to share with women is that God needs us to be who God called us to be. That's right. That way other people can see that if he, they see God in me, then they can see him in themselves. But if I have to look cookie cutter, that's right. Christianity means that you have to look a certain way and be a certain way. And that you can only like what, like if he didn't come to save sinners, then what in the world are we doing? If everybody right. in the church already saved, you know, mm -hmm. or everybody comes in and you already you know, don't have any problems or you have the perfect family or you patch everything up and make it look like you arrived the minute you got there, then how can anybody come in and really get free if they always have to hide? And that doesn't mean, you know, sloppy grace, but can you just speak to that a little bit about how being authentic helps other women and helps the women that you minister to come into their authentic identity in Christ? I think, well, what I love about the Bible and love about the word of God is that God has outlined for us or allowed lives on display for us to see their authentic selves. Mm -hmm. um, like King David, when he had, he had issues, you know, he struggled with things. Um, he struggled with, with, with lust. He struggled with being faithful, but God still called him. Um, um, Elijah. He struggled with a, a bout of depression and he, he struggled with bouts of depression. Moses, he struggled with anger. Um, so everybody throughout scripture, um, God a lot, get, lays out a foundation. Peter, he struggled with uh, also still, you know, uh, with the violent spirit when he cut off the Roman soldier's ears after he had been with Jesus for three years, you know, uh, being discipled. I mean, can you imagine? You've been eating with Jesus. You've been sleeping. How, how much more Jesus? Can you get your eat? You're right there walking with the Messiah, but he and still has him. He's, yeah. You are Peter. You yes. flesh and blood he did not reveal this to you. Yes. So you've had a revelation of who Jesus is too. And so how much more, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And when it came uh, when he came up under a test or a trial, you know, he he um he cut the Roman soldiers' ears. So first and foremost, what I love about the word of God. It's my go-to of any of the books. Before I go to any book, I, I go to my word. Amen. And I always love it when I open it because even throughout the Psalms, I love the Psalms because in the Psalms, David is being very transparent. He's being very vulnerable. He's being his authentic self. He's sharing his weaknesses. He's sharing his insecurities. He's even sharing that, He's so angry. He's telling God, go get him. You know, mm -hmm. I hope they die. You know, <laughs> you 
you know, let them, you know, I, I mean, he's being as authentic as it can get. And God still loved him. What does that say? What does that say to us? You know, what message is that God, what is God saying to us through the, the biblical uh, pioneers of, of the Bible? Abraham struggled with, yes. with his faith, even though he was a man uh, of faith, you know? So there's so many biblical heroes that we can glean from that were their authentic self that helps us to relate and also help us to understand that God says, come as you are. How also with the, with, with, with the pretense that he doesn't want us to stay the way we are, Amen. you know, understanding, yes, come as you are, come with your authentic with self. Glory to yes. God. To get. Exactly. Yes. With, yes. With, a, with an openness to let God come in and do major construction um, on our lives. Um, and so, but you know something, Krista? Honest, honestly, after I lost my husband and after we went through the pandemic in 2020, I was taking lots of walks. Um, I was taking lots of walks and I was doing a lot of um, allowing Holy Spirit to just really get to the core of my heart and um, dealing with Sandra, you know, and laying before God um, naked. And, and, um, and I think that that um, is a place that we need to come daily, like you said, to God with our authentic self. And I'm telling you the truth. I deal with drug addicts, homeless the, uh, in my shelter. And what I can say about unchurched people, they are looking for authentic. They are looking for real. They are looking for unmasked. Um, unreligious Christians who are willing to say, hey, you know, today is, um, I love Jesus, but I'm grieving and I'm hurting. Um, that you can grieve and still love Jesus. Um, you can still have bad days and still love Jesus. You can still have bouts of depression and still love Jesus. You can still be struggling with anger and still love Jesus. You can still have moments where God has asked you to um to preach and uh, and and give you opportunities and platforms and still say hey I struggle with feeling unqualified but I'm still going to go forth in faith I still feel inadequate for what God has given me in the assignment and and the vision and the, the vision he's given me it's so much bigger than me it's so much greater than me it makes me feel so little it makes me feel like how the Israelites felt felt when God was telling when God told the Israelites to go over and, and scout out the promised land and they came back and they said we were like uh, grasshoppers in the eyes, you know, and how many of us have felt like grass, grasshoppers when God gives us big visions, big dreams. Um, he's given us a great calling, a great mantle, a great mandate, and it looks so much bigger than what we feel like we are qualified or adequate to do or you know uh, uh, secure enough to do and yet we do it by faith we do it by the enablement of holy spirit we do it because god is leading us to do it we do it because we know that god is calling us to do it and god is going with us every time god said i'm with you it's always because every time god told anybody in the in, in the bible i am with you he always told them that that he always gave them that word of encouragement before he gave them the big instruction, the big assignment that they were about to go out and conquer. And he, he was letting them know, I'm saying I'm with you because if you don't know that I'm with you, you will, you will, um, you will feel inadequate. You will feel insecure. You will have moments of, of, of being afraid. And I think when my husband passed and just, you know, God was telling me, I want you to go on social media and I want you to share your grief journey. And I want you, and I said, well, God, I don't want to do it because nobody else does it. And everybody in my circle, they all walk around like they got it together. They don't never have doubts. They don't ever have fears. They've never shed a tear. They've never been hurt. They've never been let down. They've never been discouraged. And God said, but stay in your lane. I'm not asking you to follow. And he gave me this word, Pastor Krista, in 2020 after my husband died. And this is where authentic, authentic, authenticity comes in. 
He said, in this, this new year of 2021, I don't want you to follow the crowd. I want you to follow the, the cloud. And so when we're following the, the cloud instead of the crowd, and what I mean by that is if we're going to stay authentic, then we can't get into comparison. We can't get into competition because when we jump over into comparison and competition, then we, we, get, we, we lose our identity. We're, listen, nobody can be Sandra like Sandra. God, nobody can be Krista like Krista. Nobody can do it like Krista. Nobody can say it like Krista. Nobody can uh, uh, be effective in the calling and what, uh, where the shoes and the assignment that God has called Krista, what God has given you to do specifically. And so, it, 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 and so to be authentic, God told me in this, in this season, um, if you're going to stay authentic to who I called you to be, who, what I'm calling you to do, you, you got to get out of comparison. You got to get out of competition and don't follow the cloud. I, don't follow the crowd. Just follow the cloud and stay authentic. And what I tell you to post, you post it. Even if to every, if nobody else is doing it, I'm not asking you to follow the crowd. I'm asking you to follow the cloud. And I think if we stick to following the cloud instead of the crowd, which is Holy Spirit, if we follow and stay in tune with Holy Spirit, then we're able to stay authentic to who God has called us to, to be. And you know what? I think that is so good. That's a message in itself. Um, you just preached a whole sermon. I love it. Um, I, <laughs> um, I, I think that I recall when um, one of the things I say about my ministry, let me start there, is that uh, transparency and truth transform lives because I have been transparent about the things I've gone through, whether it yeah. was an abortion, you know, and yeah. sharing that testimony and sharing also that God showed me in a vision and allowed me to name my child that I had aborted and all these things that I have shared, it's on my blog. So I can't take it back the mess ups, the things that I've gone through, um, saved and unsaved. So you know, having an abortion before getting saved and then coming in and never really even dealing with that. And yeah. then one minute just being caught up in the heavens, the third heavens, yeah. feeling God's love and him telling, speaking to me. And then I, I remember reading, you know, I remember speaking at a friend's, um, uh, event for uh, abortion restoration or healing or something like that. And she told me that my testimony was what was in the book that the expert had work, wrote that she's like, God gave you that in a day. You know, it, you know, people have written about this. this. This is what we take them through in a retreat is, you oh. know, naming the child and all these things that God had led me in. And that was just one thing. And I would say, God, why do you, why do I always have to tell my story? Can I, you know, fake on days? You know, why do you know? Cause I, I know how to fake it. You know, why can't I, why? Because somebody needs you to be authentic. Somebody needs you to be real. Don't worry yeah. about the people who shun you for being real. You don't know what they're going through. Yeah. And right. that's not all of who you are. That's you right. know that there's all there's uh ninety-five percent of your life is lived off of social media. Those yeah. one or two polls that people see and may perceive something, so you're not in that click or that click where people have invited you into that circle, then right. when you start being too real, it makes them uncomfortable because yeah. You know, everybody's supposed to look and act a certain way. Yeah. But I didn't call you for that. That's right. You're effective. And, and if I could even go further and it's like, you know, that will be some platforms, but he's, but just at, to your point, are we, how much do, oh God, help me. Do we need to minister to one another? We build each other up in conferences, but the goal is to be built up, to go out and do the work. And to be equipped and prepared, empowered, and bold enough to minister to, to someone who is hurting, not to be like the religious person, but the Samaritan who stopped on the side and said, I Mom. have time for this person. I have time to help this person. I'm not so busy about my religious activities that I can see the loss, the dying, the sick, and those that Jesus came for. And yeah. I'm supposed to have the answer and I'm too busy. And I think that is 
a shame. And I think, you know, maybe not you probably, you are doing the work, but I can speak for myself and others who I am convicted. And that is when I began to say, you know, God, we, I have to make time for that, you know, instead of going around the person. And, but as you did say, not everyone is called to that, but God, as you have a relationship with him and a hearing ear and avail yourself to more than just you and your four, me and my three, four, whatever, however the thing goes, yeah. he will put you in the way to be his hands, his feet, and his eyes and ears to his people, to those that are hurting. He will send those. It's yeah. not just the church. And we are called outside the four walls of the church because there's a whole generation going to hell on our watch and that is yeah um, that is a scary truth that we're gonna yeah. have to give an account for amen amen yeah. amen so it is just so encouraging to and you guys i'm so excited even more so excited to have have pastor sandra and let me just clarify that for me of course you already know this but i use the word god a lot my pastor gets on me so but jesus and god are the same to me yeah. so, yeah. so yeah. i use it that way but that you know jesus god some people use that term and you know it's like no god jesus they're the same he's the son of god for me so if i'm saying that um uh, just to clarify what most people know that but if you're listening to me yeah, and you right. don't know that when they're interchangeable for me so if I talk about the call of God I am there's no call of God the only way that we come through to know the father and come to the father is through Jesus Christ he is the That's door right. he's the way he's the truth he's the light and the life and nobody comes to the father except by him you might know about god and you might know of god as many people do but to become a child of god you have to be born again and that is by the sacrifice that jesus gave for his life and so um, so that we could have a relationship with god the father amen so right now you kind of shared a little bit about where you're at but if you had to give this season a name what would you call it and let me just say that when you said follow the cloud and not the crowd oh god that means we have to look up i love that that means we have to come up to a higher place and stay in that <laughs> place but what season would you um if you had to give it a name what would you call the season that you're in the name of the message i'm gonna uh preach the grace place <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to preach to myself when I get over there. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, um, just, just the grace place. I think, uh, you know, um, with the passing of my husband and a loss of anything, you're entering into a season of transition, uh, a, sh a shift. Um, I just keep hearing Holy Spirit highlighting to me shift, transition, and new beginning. And so, um, and so, um, it just kind of reminds me of the butterfly, you know, the butterfly, it has to, you know, go through, you know, transformation. And I have to let, um, you know, this new season that I'm in, um, I'm like you, I'm an empty nester. Um, now, you know, my husband's gone. So now I'm living alone. And so taking, walking in this new, this new journey, this new life, this new step, this new ship, this new transition, um, I'm starting to, I feel like I'm back in the cocoon again, <laughs> you know, and uh, every so once in a while, God takes us back to that cocoon. We always think that things, when we, we hear sermons about things like it's a, it's a, for that one, it's a one time event, but actually when you're serving God, I think you go through seasons and sometimes you go back through it again, you yeah. go back through it again, you know, you go back through that whole season again. And so, um, just like with Gethsemane, Jesus, Jesus, um, God allowed uh, Jesus to have a grace uh, to go through Gethsemane. And so I feel like I'm in a grace place right now, a grace that I'm still pastoring our church, running our discipleship homes, um, still running um, Titus Two Women's Ministry. And I can only say I can only do that by the enablement of Holy Spirit, the grace of God. It's only, and that's what grace is. Grace is the 
supernatural enablement of the power of God, um, of a power of God operating in our lives, equipping us to do what we could not do in our own ability. Remember, he told the apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it is my grace that is sufficient for you in times of weakness. You know, I will give you the power. I will equip you with the power that you need to keep moving forward in what I've called you to do in your assignment, in your calling, in your ministry. I will give you the grace. And so I feel like, you know, um, so I just feel like I'm in a season of transition, new beginning. And I'm excited, actually, Krista. I'm excited. Um, God has already been opening new doors and I have been procrastinating some, I have a lot of, unfinished uh, curriculums and devotionals and books that I need to get back to doing. So I'm excited when I finally stop procrastinating <laughs> and sit down at the computer and, uh, and do it. But um, I, I'm just excited. I'm, I'm really, really excited about this new season and um, excited what God is going to do and coming out of the pandemic and just continuing to just do, I love ministry. I, and I'm not just saying that to say that. I mean, I have been hurt. I have been let down. I've been discouraged. I've been depressed. I've been betrayed. I have anything that you can, wounded, I, you can think of, but I love it. I love ministry. I, I know this is what God called me to do without, I, I, like I said in previous and a little bit ago, I ran from it for 11 years, but when I settled in, I hung up my running shoes. And I settled in with God and threw my hands up in the air. I know that this is why he saved me. With I know this is why he created me. I know this is why I was born. I know what my purpose is. And so I'm excited. Even with the loss of my husband, I'm still excited about this new season and where God is going to take, take me. So I'm going to see, I feel like I'm on that butterfly, you know, I'm in that cocoon and, uh, uh, a butterfly is going to emerge in a transition. <laughs> I love it. That's what transition is about. And um, yes, definitely when we know the call and, and we keep moving forward. But, you know, I was talking uh, just this past week about pausing. And for me, I came to a point I had done so much, right? And I, and when my, I had gone through so many things, um, not being a head pastor, but just being in ministry, you get hurt. Things, yeah. You have betrayals. You have things that, you know, blow your mind and like, what part of the, you know, you coming in, I guess everybody goes through that. You're naive. You trust everybody. It's yeah. like, woo, King Jesus, we're all on the same team. And people, you get sucker punched a couple of times and you still want to, you still have to learn to love people. Not everybody is like that, but I still choose to believe the best. And if you hurt me, you hurt me because God has called me to, to be that way and to, you know, to of course watch and pray, but to be open and, and, um, and trust him. But anyway, so going through all of those things and then my mom passed away. And I think that was 2018 was the year that I didn't actually come into, I started going through a transition. And I think for me, 2020, uh, 2019, 2020 was just really a pause. And so I've come into, and so I just kind of, you know, let go of some things. And then it gave me room when I took some things off my plate. I love ministry, like you said, but I took some things off my plate. I was asking God, I, I forgot my why. If, if I don't know if you, um, you have to reconnect with it. Sometimes yes, you can you get do. busy or you can be, what is it called? Um, doing things on autopilot to the yeah. point where, because you know, ministry, like I lead Saturday morning prayer every Saturday at my local church. I, you know, give up Friday night and then so I can be prepared for Saturday morning. I've been doing that for over a decade, you know, so it's some, one of those things, like I say, a lot of things happen offline <laughs> that people yeah. don't see, like that's yeah. what real life happens. And so, um, and you come and regardless of what I'm going through, I, the anointing shows up because it's about God. It's about him giving yes. us grace. It's about his people, not just me. And just um, 
trying my best to live that set apart life and, you know, consecrate myself to this is what he's called me to do. So Saturday, Fridays, I am in the house, you know, I am, you know, I need to be a blah, blah, blah. So this is, you know, how it operates, but somewhere along the way, it's like, okay, I, I have, I'm an IT manager by day. I have four adult children. So all these things are on my plate. I'm in ministry. I'm doing call comforts. God is calling me to do things outside the church. And, and so it just came to a place where God, you have to reconnect me with my wife. I have to know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, because I know mm. that you called me. I know what you called me to do, but I feel like because so many things are on my plate and also because I've been through trauma that I never let myself grieve, you know, because I kept going through, you know, divorce, through kids going through stuff, through all of these things. And at, and, and, you know, you just keep going because we're, that's yeah. how God makes us. And because other people are depending on us, but then God says, you know, you have to take that moment. And in the pausing, um, it doesn't mean that you're stopping. It means right. you put a hold on it and say, God, I have to, you know, figure out what I'm doing and make sure, you know, put my priorities back in order and, you know, make sure I am giving from a place where I am healthy and sound and also um, in the overflow because yeah. God will show up. And if yeah. I've learned something about ministry, God will show up. Like you said, you could be crying and going through the minute you hit the pulpit or the altar, you know, God is going to pour out if you're a vessel that as you know, are, are fit for the master's use. Then, right. um, but in the pause, like the cocoon where it looks like, girl, I don't, you know, I'm just here, <laughs> but God is rebuilding. And what I did learn is like the butterfly. It's like, okay, I remember my why. And now all of a sudden everything makes sense. I actually put a called conference on the altar. I said, Lord, you know, if you don't want me to do this, because it started out around the book that I had written and he gave me the name. He told me to go by the call conference website. I actually got a call from um, a, a ministry um, the year I bought this problem back 2016, something like that, 17, asking if I was going to use it. I said, well, you know what? I, I bought it. If I don't use it, call me back next year. And if I don't use this domain name, I'll give it to you. You don't have to, you know, buy it from me. Next thing you know, God tells me to put the call comforts together. He gives you line upon line, right? Yeah. And so, um, and so, but I was like, God, what do you want me to do? I laid down women's ministry, which I had led for 12 years. I said, I can't continue to do this and do that because I'm not in full-time ministry and I, and I work full-time in IT management. I want to transition into that, but right now, what am I supposed to do? And so all of those things in the pods happen. And then I was able to pick things back up and, and things make sense. And so yeah. now I have a new vision, a new sense of purpose. I remember my why it's not just me holding on to what God told me in the light in the dark because we go through night seasons and I'm, yeah. I'm getting off and so I went through a night season I went through such a night season but um the morning comes dawn comes in the morning the light shines. And if we just hold on through that, yeah. season, like you said, a cocoon that God is with us. And that's the one thing that he told me that he is with me and that he was with me through all of that. And so, um, I'm just thankful for that. And I just bless God for you. I can't wait to see what all God is going to do in that with the books and the curriculums and all of that as you uh, reemerge. I mean, and sometimes it doesn't look like that, right? Because we can continue to be going, but on the inside and on the side where people can't see, God is doing a work. So you're yeah. still doing total restoration ministries and all those things. And yet, there is this time of being still that you're walking through in the spirit to allow God to pour into you what the next thing is to do before you make that move. I so yeah. understand that. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Yeah, I believe that. 
Praise God. So it has been so, so good talking to you. I am so excited. This, oh, I can't wait. I know it's just going to be fire. Listen, <laughs> fire. And this year we have added an hour of worship and prayer to the beginning. Amen. And that is what um, that's the atmosphere. Yeah, it sets the atmosphere. And I lead prayer all, you know, and in prayer, we go off, sis. We, we you know, it, it is amazing. The prophetic word comes, the worship comes, and God just feels and just ministers to people. And, yeah. and prayer is one of the highlights of, of my week. And, um, you know, even though I have my own personal time, we have that corporate prayer. And so I'm, I would be a miss. If I do not, you know, uh, spend that time with the women in the presence of the Lord. So I look forward to that. But I want you to answer two questions for me, if you would, before you leave. Um, I know that you're reading your Bible. And if you're not reading anything right now, that's okay. But if there's a book that you can recommend or something that you're reading right now that you can share with women, that might. Well, I have, I just started reading it. And um, yes, I'm reading. I'm doing this, the, De the, the, uh, the Deborah anointing. Mm -hmm. So I got the book and the, the workbook. So mm -hmm. this is what I'm reading, the Deborah anointing. Cause this is what I feel. Um, this is what I feel that God is calling me to, um, um, this season as, as well as Deborah and just learning how to walk in that, that new, this new mantle and anointing and calling. And so, um, so yeah, I'm reading that. Huh? Who is it by? Oh, I'm sorry. It's by Michelle McLean. Uh, McLean. Michelle McLean Walters. Okay. Yes. I've seen the book before. And it comes with the workbook as well. Okay. I yeah, like study it. guide. So I got the book and the study guide. Okay, awesome. The Deborah Anointing. Okay, and then let everyone know where they can find you and how they can um, sow and connect into Total Restoration Ministries if they want to donate or help with some of the things you have going on. Okay, so if they um, want to know about Total Restoration Ministries, we are on www.totalrestorationministries.com. Um, there's a, a donation page. You can donate if you want to sow into our shelter, our substance abuse uh, discipleship program, or into our upcoming back to school outreach. That's September the 5th. Um, also, if you want to connect with me, I am on Facebook and Instagram, uh, Sandra Perez Webster, Sandra Perez Webster. Okay. So if you want to connect with me there. And we'll make sure that that and her information is in the show notes and on YouTube in the description. And so it has been such a pleasure talking to you and getting to know you more. And I'm sure um, you have encouraged our audience and for anyone who feels that they have a call by God or for those that feel like, you know, what God has called them to do is too big that I'm sure that you have encourage them in all that God has done with you. So thank you so much. And um, we look forward to having you at the call conference. Amen. It's, I, I'm excited too. Can't wait. Yes. So I am going to stop.